Hello and welcome to TSG Foundation's Wisdom of the Zodiac. Today's lesson and meditation will be taken from Volume 3 of Wisdom of the Zodiac, Chapter 30, titled Scorpio Freedom. What I will do in this session is to give you some of the highlights of this chapter that I think are important to meditate on and think about. And then I will give you five seed thoughts for the five days of celebrating this wonderful full moon. And at the end, I will do a guided meditation for you that you can use as a template for the five days of your meditations. So let's begin on page 343. So chapter 30. There is one battle that we must carry on throughout our life. One battle. It's interesting that he starts with the idea of battle because in Scorpio we will learn that we are to become disciples as warriors for the Ageless Wisdom and the principles of the Ageless Wisdom. It is the battle to eliminate our limitations. And we all have limitations no matter at what level we are. We have limitations, which means we can go to the next level. If only we can learn these few words and practice them in our life, we would be totally different human beings. So he's suggesting that there is room to grow and to change, that wherever we are right now, it's fine, but it's a limitation. And we can, if we battle, move forward and go beyond where we are right now. Whatever your definition is, of where you want to go, that's where your battle will take you. Today, the Scorpio energies are very much abundant. And as you're listening to this lecture, a few days before the full moon or the full moon or a few days after, think about the energies that you are experiencing right now. What challenges are facing you, what ideas, what insights you are having. So attune yourself to those energies. And through our meditations, prayers, music, and singing, we can bring these energies into our being and start our business. What is our business? Interesting. Our business is to fight against our limitations. So the business of a disciple is to fight against your limitations, however you define those limitations. This is not intended to bash yourself or to say how awful you are, but to see where you are through your process of meditation, prayer, music, and singing. Use those four items in your life and you will see how day after day, month after month, year after year, you will find exactly where your limitations lie. And you'll take baby steps, baby steps, but you will see the cumulative effect after years and years of work. I have seen it in my life. I've seen it in the lives of many people. And I see how much, if we really take this idea seriously, and really work on it, then we see the limitations slowly changing and we battle these limitations and we make it our business, the business of our lives, to fight against limitations. The idea is to fight, not just to condone or say, so what, but to fight them, which means that you are developing your intelligence to see where it is you want to fight and where you want to go. And you're developing a love for yourself, that beautiful compassion that you have for yourself that, yes, indeed, you can achieve. You are developing the strength, the willpower, knowing that your soul can take you to heights that you have never seen before. So keep these ideas in your mind. And let's go to the second theme of this chapter. At the bottom of the page, Torquem writes, A great sage says that we can make ourselves immediately a great master if we really contact the reality. Wow, when I read that, I thought, wow, what is the reality? How do I know the reality that resonates with me inside? And we really have to look at this so that we do not live our life based on glamours and illusions and patterns that have been given to us and we have brought from other lifetimes that no longer apply to our life right now. We can't progress unless we see the reality, where we are, what are our limitations, and how we take the steps to overcome them. Let me continue reading, because this is really the theme of this entire chapter. 
What is the reality in this case? The reality is love to all beings. That includes you. Joy to all beings. Again, it includes you. Compassion to all beings. Again, including you. Serenity to all beings. Again, it includes you. These four verses that are verses of a beautiful mantra. When you finish this video, listen to the entirety of that song. You're going to love it. These four verses have everything that is in our nature. Everything. Everything is love, joy, compassion, serenity. When we live by those four items, we will bring into actualization all the great principles of the Great Ones. So these four verses have everything that is in our nature. Everything. All human relations can be totally transformed if these four realities are accepted and worked upon. Then you become a warrior. Against what? Love against hatred. Joy against depression, grief, and sadness. Compassion against crimes and separatism. Oh boy. And serenity against all agitations that are going on within our nature, within our nation, within all humanity. So the disciple, and he is speaking directly to you and me. And I assume that you are beginning to be disciples, and some of you may be. Maybe some of you even are advancing toward initiation. So the disciple exercising these four things enters into the path of warriorship. Initiation is a simple word. It's not mysterious. It's a word that means you have overcome a limitation. For example, the first initiation is the limitations of the physical body, the physical desires and needs. Second initiation focuses on the emotions plus the physical together. Third initiation focuses on the mental, overcoming mental limitations, and as well as emotional and physical. We can stop right there. Those are plenty of work for us in one lifetime. So this theme is so beautiful. Keep it in your mind. Read it over and over and think about it. The second theme in this chapter is given from Alice Bailey's Esoteric Astrology, page 198. It is quoted on the top of page 345. Let me read it for us. Scorpio is a great constellation which influences the turning point in the life of humanity and the life of the individual human being. It's a turning point in our life, or we can make it into a turning point in our life. If we ignore it, of course, nothing happens. For the first time in the history of both mankind and disciples, the energy of Sirius pouring into the seven groups which form our planetary hierarchy evokes a response. So this great energy of Sirius is coming into our planetary hierarchy and it's evoking a response from the hierarchy and of course it's influencing our thinking, our feelings, our actions so that we become warriors and take action. Tarkum says on the same page, it is such an opportunity and critical moment in our life and when these kinds of feelings come, we must catch them. So at this time, when we do our meditations on the seed thoughts, when we do our evening review, when we cultivate joy in our life, these are the three key items that are given in this chapter, then what we do is we grasp ideas, we formulate them, and we are able, through a healthy mind, through a joyful attitude, through knowing the reality of where we should go, we formulate the path to overcoming our limitations, limitations of our family, our group, and why not humanity. In that same paragraph, Torkham writes something really, really beautiful that should inspire all of us at the bottom of that page. There is no too soon or too late. Now is the time. It is just at that moment you feel you should change yourself. This is the moment you should grasp and do something about it. It's a turning point in our life when we take these keynotes and meditate on them full moon after full moon, 
full moon after full moon that will make a difference. You might not see a difference in the first month or the second month, but after a year, two years, three years, you will see the difference. I have been doing this month after month for many years now, and I can see a difference in my life, in the life of our group, and the life of all the people who read these beautiful books and do the meditations. You will change and you will start one by one overcoming your limitations. On page 346, here's an answer to why should we do this? He says, all these things we are talking are nothing else but health giving energies. These energies are not meant to demean us or making us feel bad or, oh, I have this or that limitation. Rather, it is health giving. Why? Because when we overcome blockages, we let those energies flow into us and give us greater health, greater insights, greater clarity. Actually, he says, humanity is killing itself by not absorbing these kinds of energies. Okay. For example, we hate, don't we? Even if individually you and I don't hate, there are things that we intensely dislike about certain things. And that is not a good energy. You see, so what should we do? Instead of hate, we should love. Hate is killing us. It's true. Hate is creating lots of diseases in our emotional body, in our mental body. Research is showing this. In a few years, it comes out as physical diseases. It is so clear that now, even in scientific and medical circles, this is showing to be the case. So, this is very important for us. And what is it that we are going to do at the five days of observing the full moon of Scorpio? Let me outline it for us. First, I'd like you to remember the three key items that are highlighted in this chapter. The first one is meditation. Meditate every day. And I recommend that you meditate using seed thought meditation. Because we have an entire group of people who meditate every day using seed thoughts. And I see how beautifully we grow together and we deepen our insights. So the first thing is seed thought meditation. The second thing that is highlighted in this chapter is to do evening review. If you can, review your day every day. If you can't, do it once a week. Whichever day is the best for you when you're feeling serene and quiet and joyful, review your week, review your day, and see where your limitations are, where are there changes that you would like to make, and see the reality of what is going on in your life. You will see that if you do that on a regular basis, you yourself will make the needed changes. Number three, I'd like you to think about cultivating more and more joy. Because when you cultivate joy, the answer to your questions and your problems will be made abundantly clear and you will take the right actions to correct them. Okay, so those are three things. Now, how to observe the five days of the full moon of Scorpio. Day number one, you're going to use the meditation, guided meditation that I'm going to do at the end. You're going to use it with the keynote of love to all beings. And the question is, how do I bring love to all beings? Start with yourself, your immediate family and friends, and then take it out. And beings doesn't mean just human beings. It means the animal kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, even the mineral kingdom, or even the angelic and higher worldly kingdoms, wherever you can go with that. Love to all beings. Day number two, meditate on the keynote joy to all beings. How can you bring joy to all beings? And really think about that. It could be little things that you do or big things that you do. Okay. Number three is the day of the full moon. And you're going to concentrate on the keynote of freedom. Because the keynote of freedom from limitations is a keynote of Scorpio. And I will do the guided meditation from the book on that. Day number four, the day after the full moon, compassion to all beings is your keynote. Okay. Day number five, serenity to all beings is your keynote. These are so beautiful. I love them. And when I think about them, the word of the keynote itself makes me quiet down and be peaceful. And I start thinking of creative ways that I can bring love 
and joy and compassion and serenity to myself and everything around me, even my furniture, my clothes, will benefit when we bring these things to them. Okay, so now let's do this beautiful meditation that's given on pages 352, 353, 354. I will guide us and I think you'll love it. And when you do the other days, just substitute the seed thought for that day. All right, so this is for the day of the full moon. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Relax. And as always, we take a minute to integrate ourselves. That means you put everything that you're worried about outside the door. You just pull yourself together and you align yourself with your solar angel. You're in one line, focused. smile on your face and fill your heart with gratitude and find things that you are grateful for starting with the material and take it to wherever you need to take it let's take a minute and be grateful I am grateful for Be grateful for everything that you are. Really do that with real honesty and integrity. You are grateful for everything that you are. Third, be grateful for everything that you understand. Take a minute and see how many things you understand. From academic things, worldly things, political things, whatever it is. Now we go into our seed thought of freedom. And to approach that, we are going to think about one limitation that we have and see how you can get rid of it. Freedom from a physical limitation. Let's take it step by step. Now identify an emotional limitation and see how you are going to remove it and be free from it. Now 
Next, we are going to identify a mental limitation and how we are going to get rid of it. Just one. Be free from it. It could be a worry, a hatred, a separatism that you feel and you think. See what it is that bugs you and sticks to you and you want to remove it. Imagine a beam coming to you from the hierarchy and coming to these physical, emotional, mental limitations and eliminating them. Just put them outside of you and just see that beam of light coming to them and removing them. Now we come to the blessing portion. Visualize a great one who is blessing you. That great one can be anyone, your soul or angel or any great being that you love. Visualize that the Great One is blessing you and transmitting his or her energy to you from Scorpio and into your system. Slowly, slowly, you feel great peace. Bring your mind into peace. And visualize a five-pointed star above your head and promise to your star that you will do your best to achieve freedom from all your limitations. Stay in that peaceful state and repeat after me, the souls of men are one and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all of us love. Let us close with three ohms. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate having you subscribe to our channel and be part of our group. 
our worldwide effort to spread this wonderful teaching all over the world. Please be sure to get your volumes of Wisdom of the Zodiac. We're happy to ship it anywhere in the world for you. I appreciate your participation and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.